Hello everyone. If you've been watching our channel, some of you may already know that Laura and I love modifying cars. One aspect we don't particularly like is the routine maintenance involved. The third brake light has been out for several weeks now. And since it's raining this weekend, we've decided to finally take care of it today. We could have simply fixed the blown bulb with an LED replacement, but that would make us look like a bunch of peasants. Naturally, we decided to make an LED array with an Arduino to control the light pattern. After removing the brake light from the car, we noticed plastic squeeze out between the lens and the housing. Unfortunately for us, that means the lens and housing aren't sealed by butyl, so we need to cut it open. Using a wood burning tool, we score the plastic housing to separate it from the lens. With some leveraging assistance, the lens and the housing are pulled apart. On the side with the lens, there's a diffuser to help spread the light from the original bulb. Huh. This is no longer required. We cleaned up the edges of our cut line. The balled up pieces of plastic just break right off using a pair of small pliers. To make the LED array, we cut a piece of prototyping board matching the inside dimensions of the housing. We had to remove the reflector and shave down some of the flutes in order to get a snap fit. Using red LED diodes, we arranged seven parallel circuits of four series LEDs with a 180 ohm resistor. Unconventionally, we opted to wire the digital inputs to switch the ground leg of each LED circuit instead of the positive 5 volts. Using the 12 volts from the car allows us to have more LEDs wired in series for each circuit. Really, the only advantage this gives us is using fewer digital inputs on the Arduino for the same number of LEDs. To cut down on the physical number of wires, we made makeshift traces on the proto board by overflowing the solder from one point to another. We're using an Arduino Nano to control the LEDs. Using inputs two through nine, where two through eight are the LED outputs and nine is the brake light input. Since the brake light input is 12 volts from the car, we need to step it down to 5 volts so we don't blow up the Arduino. To do this, we're using this USB charging adapter. Removing the plastic shell, grounding spring thing, and the USB port, we solder wires in their place. By the way, these helper clips are nice, but the teeth are way too sharp. I got smarter as the project progressed and I put heat shrink tubing over the jaws to keep it from marring up the wires. To keep things modular, we used 8-pin waterproof connectors. Since we don't have the right crimping tool, we use small pliers to attach the pins onto the wires. This is not the best, but also not the worst. After the connectors are crimped, the wires are soldered onto the negative points on the proto board. The output of the charging adapter is soldered into pin 9, the input of the Arduino. We modeled and 3D printed a small enclosure for the Arduino and the adapter. The lid of the enclosure has a small hole for the wires to pass through, so we feed them through before attaching the wires to the connector housing.
Once that's done, we place the Arduino in the enclosure between the partitions and the adapter on the opposite side. We hot glue the adapter and not the Arduino so that we can pull the Arduino out in case we need to reprogram it. Then we carefully close the lid and hot glue along the shorter sides. We now feed the wires from the LED board through the brake light housing one by one, being sure to connect them in the proper location of the connector housing. Once the LED board is seated, a small dab of hot glue on each side will keep it from moving around. Then we can line the lens portion up to the housing and hot glue the seam all around. After consolidating the power and ground wires, we wrapped up the electronics by crimping female spade connectors on the board side and male connectors on the car side. Once we plugged everything up, we tucked the enclosure away and set the brake light into place. Overall, we're happy with how the brake light turned out. If the blinking pattern turns out to be too obnoxious, that's great because it means you can see us braking. If you learned something from this project, click the thumbs up button, share it, and subscribe for more things. Thanks for watching.